It was interesting. We had um, photographer Andre Perrick uh -huh. who shot uh, Blue Valentine. Right. And he said, and Half Nelson, he said, I don't think the audience comes to the theater to see great photography. They come to the theater to see great performances. Right. And um, uh, somebody just said to me recently, you know, you could say you say that's totally right. They don't come to the theater to see great photography, but the, but they really do come to the theater to see great editing, because that is the story. Right. Yeah. As long as they don't know that it's great editing. The first cut, cut. The first cut. The first cut, cut. First. The, the first, first cut, 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 cut. I'll just teach you simple cuts to start with. Welcome back to Craft Truck. In the cut, Kevin Stitt, picture editor. Glad to be here. You know, I, I, I interviewed for a show a couple of years ago, and, they, and the director said to me, he said, um, I feel this story is a love story. He said, have you ever cut a love story before? I didn't quite know what to tell him other than I always considered payback a love story. <laughs> it is what it is. It is. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, they want to classify you into human conditions, but it's all a human condition. Right. And it's all part of the same storytelling you know, bag of tricks. So then how is Payback a love story? His true love is uh, Maria Bello's character. Right. Th which where they were kept from and they get back together. But the A story is get even, is get the revenge. Right. But that so. brings him back to her, which events had taken place which kept them. He was her driver. She was a prostitute. And he really loved her. That's awesome. Well, Brian Helgeland wrote it, right. so it was all there, and it was, his version, of course, was different than the theatrical version. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, was, okay, so tell us about the differences there. Well, it was sort of both our uh, baptism by fire, that movie, because it was his first feature it's directing, true. and it was my first single credit editing job. Really? Yeah. So a little bit nerve-wracking experience. Yeah, and the but wasn't the, a huge budget. It was like about a twenty million dollar movie. Though. It was not expensive. Right. Okay. No, and it was you know it was everybody's idea at the time was to make sort of a homage to gritty seventies crime drama, and uh, it was his version was pretty tough. So what was the difference between that and the studio cut? Studio cut was he didn't beat up Deborah Unger. Uh huh. When, and, he, when he comes back and walks yeah. in, and, and they um, they ended up reshooting a new third act. In which what happens? In which they introduce uh, Chris Christopherson as the bad guy, and he gets the money. See the big the big stumbling block to Brian's version when we did it, which I thought was the coolest thing about it because it was just right out of the 1970s. Was he didn't get the money. He kills the dog, or he doesn't kill the dog, the dog gets killed. Um, they're not sure if he gets the girl, and they're not sure if he lives. It was like... And evidently you cannot make a studio movie with those four aspects in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So. That's all, so, but did you have to edit the... the, the, the yes. The, no, I was... I. So they... Two, 2006 or seven, Brian got the opportunity to go back and do his version. And the joke was with Brian, we're working on it, I go, you know, I've been working on this movie for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so cutting action. You cut payback. A lot of action in that movie. Yeah. You cut paycheck. Right. A lot of action in that movie. Now right. you're talking about John Woo who's right, right, constantly right. moving the camera. Right. There's got to be dove somewhere in the movie. I'm sure there. There is. There's dove somewhere. There's a dove in the there's movie. There's a dove yeah, in the gun movie. Gun to gun. Got to be a fucking dove. In gun the movie. to gun, face to face, gun conflict. Right. Yeah. yeah no. And, oh, and, and is there anybody shooting by swinging their hands? I like believe so. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right, as long as all those ticks. Anyway, John Woo is apparently great to work with. He's a he's a gentleman. Yeah, I've heard that. I've yeah, heard yeah. that he's just like just a, such a sweet, talented right. guy. Um, how involved in the editing 
was is he like right in there or is it just sort of you do things and then he comes back? Oh no, you you show him a first cut and then he goes in and you know he does his thing. Yeah, right. He's, he's, With he's, you though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Right. And he's he's a very visual filmmaker. You know, he he likes his shots and you know he likes to keep the camera moving, and that that's just his style. <laughs> What was the, cha the, the structural challenge of cutting this movie? Well, it's interesting enough, a lot of the movie takes place in front of this, this viewing machine, which is sort of a podium with a, with a giant screen in it, and it, which was shot just green screen. Right. And nobody really knew what it was supposed to look like. Right. And so we were going back and forth on this, and... and People were involved in trying to come up with something, and I would, you know, we were maybe five or six weeks out from a preview. We definitely needed it. We couldn't have previewed it with green screen. And I used to just poke my head into the visual effects people. I go, "How's the future look? It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great." And about every week, I'd punch in and say, "How's the future look? It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great." So then, about two weeks before the preview, I go, "How's the future look? Go, we got nothing." <laughs> <laughs> so we're scrambling it's like well what do we put in there for this preview so this is footage that it was shot or is it stuff that was supposed to be CGI'd or they just don't... everything it was a mixed bag so you're cutting the story where he's looking at the right. screen referring to the screen and you're trying to like you know so it's like we're trying to figure the, the out jaws again. Everybody. The jaws closed. The burrows frowned. The, yeah, you know, exactly. But you have no idea what's going to be shown or what the length no, of these... No, I mean, there are some, some story points that can be shot and revisited in the screen, but it's supposed to be very highly stylized, and, and nobody really could quite figure out what this was supposed to be. So now we've got to come up with something. So I called one of the assistants in, and I said, go get me 2001 Space Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> really? And you know where he goes through the black hole? Yes. That's what we used. You just... Just for temp. Do that. We did that. And I remember that we turned it over to the trailer department and they said, we want, um, we want those images from the, from the future machine. And I said, well, you're going to have to talk to Stanley Kubrick. And he had just passed away. I go, well, he's dead. And I go, well, I didn't say it was going to be easy. <laughs> That's very good. What, what, what is the favorite movie that you've ever cut? It was Knight's Tale. It was just such a different movie. Right. Um, and That's really sweet, Kevin. <laughs> you did Knight's Tale. Knight's Tale was and you cool. made it really nice. It was pretty cool. Though. No, no, yeah, I, I, I bet. I mean, There's 27 horses. jousts in that movie. 27 jousts. Each one different. <laughs> <laughs> Try doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was great. Your face was great. Well, let me tell you something. There's 27 jazz in that. But also, you had Heath Ledger. Oh, it was fantastic Unbelievable cast. performance. Heath Ledger. Paul Bettany. Paul, Be Paul Bettany. Alan Tudyk. Paul Bettany. No. He's, his stuff must come in. The other thing, I've met him. He's gold. He's gold. And he is also like... So stoic. So I have to imagine like the outtakes from him are kind He's of wacky. just like just like oh well, this didn't work. Well, he plays Chaucer. Yeah. His first day on the set, he's completely naked. <laughs> he's like, well, that's thanks, the rule. They try and get the nudity out of the way right, so that right. the person first can't, day, I don't know can't anybody, fight it at the end. And now of I'm it. naked. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so you've seen Paul's. I have not. There evidently was some sort of a little sock device or something that. Uh, well, I didn't, you didn't go looking. I didn't want. You didn't want to? <laughs> no. Okay, fine. That's not what I heard. <laughs> so let's talk about the changing way of the times now, the ways of the times. First of all, editing is getting faster and faster and faster. I mean, have you noticed that in your... Well, a few years ago, certainly it was done the best in the Bourne series, the sort of shaky cam. Yeah. And uh, Chris Rouse was the editor of those things, and he's a master at it. Um, do you see that? Do you ever see something on screen and go, oh, man, I don't know how. It's, it, it can be done well, and it can be done not so well. And, right. and The Bourne was, was always fantastic. Um, but, you know, geography is important in action sequences. You've got to right. let the audience know where it is. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of shots. 
Right. And um, I worked with Pete Berg on a on a movie that uh, Kingdom. Yeah, and that was he's he's a master at that too. Yeah. And um, but I kind of get a feeling from the way I see movies now, it's kind of playing itself out. It's sort of moving on to the next style. Right. You know, because it's kind of been done. So we'll be back hanging on wides and one or Well, interesting, I just did a movie with uh, Chris McCory. Oh, yeah? And Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher. Which I saw in the theater, And he's by the way. totally r sort of a retrograde feel to that movie. Yeah. And it was really interesting to work on. What was, what was the hardest uh, sequence to edit in, uh, in Jack Reacher?